So the three pillars that I want to make sure that we leave with is um, excellence in learning because it's not just for Providence, it's for the entire state. Um, that's extremely important for us, engaged communities and world-class talent. And you're gonna see that that is the three pillars that we frame this work around. So I think that it is extremely important for us to keep remembering those conversations that we have. Um, if we talk about engaged communities, I think this is the work. This is the work that we have done with the community and we will continue to do with the community. We are very grateful to the, um, the members that have participated, but I think that for us, we want to make sure that our communities are heard and that we make change on their needs. So we, long, we have, we went, we doubled the percentage of students who feel the sense of belonging in their schools from 40 to 80%. Quadrupled the percentage of families who are responding to the survey works from 20 to 80%. These are very high metrics that we have put in there. Rapid response systems where contact is um, extremely important to get back to the community. We kept hearing how there was this disconnect. Grown our own parent and community engagement from 55 adults to 250 adults. So I think that there's a lot of expectations that we have with the communities and what we're going to do moving forward. So here's a really important one. Increase the percentage of families with favorable perception of their child's school to 80%. That's huge. That's huge. And we are gonna do our best to get there, but we're gonna work with the community because we're not magicians. I, I kept saying that early on, we're not magicians. It's gonna take all of us. And it's also gonna take all of us to say, we don't agree with what's going on there. We need to push and make sure that we're in a better place. Harrison? Yeah, just real quick. Will we talk a little bit about just the, the ex excellence in learning um, we want to make sure that 100% of our students are attending um, a two-star school and above, and two-star being the absolute floor. So we are really focused and, and really oriented on that. Uh, we want 90% of our students present for 90% of the school year. This notion of chronic absenteeism, uh, we've got to work with the community to eliminate that. Kids have to be in school, but we also have to make schools a place where kids belong and they feel as if they're appreciated. I also want to bring uh, sort of the attention to this notion of uh, our multilingual learners. There's been a DOJ report that has really called out how we are servicing that community. Uh, right now, there are only 30% of our multilingual learners that are on target uh, when we measure them uh, according to the access assessment. We want to flip that. Instead of one third, we want two thirds of our multilingual learners to be able to show proficiency. And again, that's the floor and that's not the ceiling. And then we talk about RICAS. Uh, we want to move the needle significantly with RICAS. Right now, we look at our graduation rates. We are right around 74%. Uh, there's no excuse why we can't be in the high 80s, 89%, 90%. Uh, so that is going to be a critical focus, ensuring that we get students across the stage, but when they get across the stage that they're prepared for whatever rigors in life uh, that they choose to engage in. That means that we've got to rethink our high schools. And you've probably noticed over the last couple of days, the last few weeks, I've been focused squarely on high schools and how we're going to deliver world-class education. And it has come with some really tough decisions. But again, we're going to go back to our first core value, students first. We're going to make sure that we lead with that. And we also, as I said earlier, want to improve RICAS scores significantly. So we've got some pretty audacious goals uh, that centered around excellence and learning. And the final piece is the commissioner's vision to roll out a district-wide curriculum. That is going to be a game changer for our schools and our students. And we've already gotten rave reviews from teachers who've participated in that staff development. They want more and they're excited to dig in and be able to deliver that content in a way that we're gonna get the transformational changes that we need. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the measures of world-class talent because it's going to be really important for us. It's increasing the teachers, the percentage of teachers that are in the school for the school years. So I think that that's really important. Increase the percentage of teacher with ESL license 
and a bilingual certification from 17 to 52 percent. That means that we're going to be working 24 hours a day to make this happen. Every level from the district level up into the state level. What makes sense? What can we put in place? Because we cannot have the vacancies that we currently have or the teachers that don't have the expertise for this very diverse population that the superintendent was talking about because that's really important for us. We want the staffing in the classroom to begin from the year, from the very beginning of the year, um, from 95 to 98%. Um, that may not seem like a lot, but it is um, a great deal what happens in the classroom. And we start off the year with not enough teachers starting with the students. For every external job posting, we want to see three qualified candidates. We have a big initiative going on right now. All of you received our um, online commercial or campaign, sorry. Um, and the first day we put it out there, we got 20 applicants interested. So we're really committed to changing what it looks like in Providence. We want to engage teachers, bring in teachers that have seen other places, have been in other places, to work with the talented teachers that we have here that want to work in a very collaborative fashion. We have seen that desire. So we are really looking at all these measures that you see here in the plan as you look at them, tying that into what are the things that we need to do to be able to get there. I think that's the key of this plan is creating those steps and being flexible, guys, because I think that we may try one thing and realize that it's not going to get us there. But we have touch points internally that will keep us on track to try to reach those measures as quickly as possible. And in order for us to do that, we have to also change our systems at the district level. And superintendent will talk to you about efficient district systems because we know this is not about one problem, right? This is about a systems failure. And what we have been already putting in place is changing the way that the system works. The superintendent talked earlier about um, our meeting with teachers. He's gone to all the schools. I've been to all the schools. We continued our coffee hours with teachers. We heard of some of the systemic problems that we need to address and we started addressing them very quickly. So superintendent, do you want to? Really briefly, uh, it's no secret, the John Hopkins report called out how we needed to take a very deep introspective look into how we operate as a central office. And my vision for central office is that we transition from being this lumbering bureaucracy to an agile support mechanism that actually supports schools. So the last few months, we've been redesigning and reimagining central office to better support the needs of schools. You may have heard about the hire of our two network superintendents who's gonna build a team of support people that's gonna directly support schools. This is designed to cut out the middleman and the minutiae from central office and just get it done. So in central office, in essence, becomes an agile support arm that's, um, that their job is to get to yes for schools. So A, very specifically, when we talk about, okay, so what does that look like? How do we push funding closer to schools? So right now we're about 3.75% funding for students where, uh, schools where they have flex funding. We wanna increase that to over 10%. Um, we want leaders to say, hey, I am being supported by central office. And right now, overwhelmingly, our leaders don't feel as if central office is supporting their needs. And then we also wanna decrease the number of days that it gets, that it takes for, for schools and teachers to order supplies. We've had this process where we've had to go through months and months of trying to get the necessary supply, uh, supplies to schools and resources just because of just central office and other bureaucratic minutia. We wanna almost cut that in half. So from almost 100 days to maybe 50 days is where we're gonna market if we've got a system that gets resources and supplies from order to the supplier and back to the school. Thank you, Superintendent. And I'll finish with a couple of things that um, are around accountability, but not really, it's, it's our vision. You may be asking some of, of the hows, and I'll give you a little bit of what we think is really important. And the district-wide community council, crucial for us. What um, the academies, user-friendly rapid response systems for families, we don't want a family to ever feel that they're alone in, in the in this work, right? Or in, in for their students, that they we're really partners. I think when you think about excellence in learning is having a coherent academic vision. We have not had one. When the superintendent talked about the curriculum, 
that may sound like, oh, what, why does that matter? It matters because our kids are highly mobile. It matters because then the teachers can plan across schools. It matters so that we can have a coherent system that everybody gets the same type of education. Not because the zip code change, does it change, right? So I think that that's important. So world-class talent, partnering to build teacher and school leadership pipeline, really important for us. Expanding professional development, non-traditional teacher paths. We're working on that. I think the other piece that's really important is site-based management, including annual review of principal competencies. The principals have to be allowed to lead. And that's part of the work. So we're really talking about site-based management and what that's going to look like. I think we are also talking about, you know, collect, a new collective bargaining agreement and different buildings. We are going to have different K-12 models throughout the city. And I know that we're getting ready to announce maybe a new building coming online in the south side of Providence. I think we're, we're, we're in a good place that we are going to be taking some buildings offline. And um, we have a generous offer right now on the table that we are going to take advantage of. And I think that it's really important for us to know that all those things are going to be happening and are happening right now as we move forward. All right, so thank the you. other piece, I just want to add one more thing, is the data warehouse and the facilities plan. As you know, we don't own the buildings, but we're working very closely with the mayor to expedite that work. Uh, and we're going to be very public about our timeframes so that we can move quickly as we do this work. 